Let's take a look at how democratic nations allow foreign governments to exploit their liberties and create social and political implosion. Welcome to Four Seas, One Family. Welcome to Four Seas, One Family, where we share thoughts and opinions concerning life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. Once again, what I'm about to say may contradict the beliefs of those who regard their personal, political, and often religious beliefs as the best representations of how to live a prosperous life and even govern people. Anyway, I hope I can spend a few minutes with you to share my opinions, and I hope you don't jump to conclusions. I hope to present to you a different point of view that, although imperfect, may open an avenue of honest and respectful dialogue. You see, it's often hard to persuade some people around us, especially from our own nation, that the way they see the world isn't how it really is. And I will go into some reasons why this may be so. As I mentioned in part one, people who point this out may find themselves becoming outcasts. And the reason could be because they present views that people around them may have never heard of or because of reasons some people consider indisputable and simply aren't able to accept. As we interact with people, especially from different cultures and backgrounds, we soon discover that some of the stories impressed on us related to the founding and building of our own nation and other nations were not based on facts or even actual events, but presented to us, especially at an early age, to boost our national proudness, ethnic superiority, or even self-esteem. Eventually, we find ourselves in situations that force us to question information taught to us and later blindly believe, especially at an early age. And soon our curiosity and discoveries of the inaccuracies we uncovered during and after formal education, we become able to analyze and filter out what is historical fact and fiction, as well as grasp a better understanding of the current events taking place in the world today. Those who practice critical thinking begin to ask serious questions about their nation and other nations' global perspectives on topics like human rights and the environment. At some point in time, we may start to feel misled and wonder why we were fed narratives designed to subconsciously heighten a particular type of cultural pride and nationalism or purposely misinform naive and sometimes narrow-minded individuals. Unfortunately, I received this type of education in the United States, and I'm more than sure that other people in other parts of the world have also received this type of one-sided education of their nation. Now, this nationalistic brainwashing may have been first implemented with good intentions, but in the long term could only become a detrimental element when applied to solving global misunderstandings and conflicts. For example, I was taught and believed that my nation's founders provided and implemented provisions that explicitly stated that all men were created equal. However, I later learned that these provisions were made by powerful and influential men of the time and, like most human beings, weren't perfect or incorruptible. The truth is, the majority of the men who worked together to create my nation's constitution were more concerned with maintaining their legacy and wealth. They did so by creating laws and regulations that kept people like them in power, and those who they saw as less valued in a perpetual state of inabilities and hopelessness. I later learned that their motivation kept people who looked like me or those who didn't have the wealth, land, property, confused, desperate, and even disheartened. I now know that by making these statements, I may sound as if I am very disappointed in my country, but the fact is it's just the opposite. Just the opposite is true. Fortunately, there were individuals from my nation's 
founder's uh, pedigree or birth line, along with those formerly held in bondage who fought vigorously to ensure that all citizens had the same rights and privileges that today we simply call human rights. Although some advancements have been made, there still exists some social, political, and financial inequalities. Still, the good thing is that today, citizens of my home nations are allowed to openly discuss and engage in peaceful actions related to issues they see as negatively affecting their lives, unlike people living under certain authoritarian governments. You see, the truth is, democratic nations like my own, while searching for social and political improvements, made mistakes. And through struggles that almost tore the nation apart, open dialogue allowed citizens to create and have access to government-protected regulations that help reduce inequalities. Now, luckily, people in open democratic nations are allowed to make their grievances publicly known without the fear of being forcefully silenced or jailed. I am stressing this point because I want to point out that citizens of democratic nations must cherish their hard-earned right to raise their grievances for positive changes without fear of retributions. However, citizens of democratic nations must safeguard their rights and avoid becoming tools of, say, nefarious forces or individuals in foreign governments. Citizens of democratic nations working to find solutions for their grievances must ensure that they aren't being used to promote narratives that may dilute or devalue their objectives and inject destructive elements from outside forces. The truth is, there are some organizations in democratic countries that are camouflaged in movements for legitimate social reforms and supported by foreign governments that are openly working to encourage the internal destruction and collapse of democratic social structures and governments they consider to be their adversaries. Now, I am proud to come from a nation that, although not perfect, is still striving to become the dream the people of the nation hope it can become. Unlike living under certain authoritarian governments, a single political party or charismatic individual who maintains a tight grip over people under control by sanctioning which narratives are allowed and promoted. Democratic nations, such as my own, have provisions to protect their citizens' rights and allow nonviolent opposing opinions to be heard and discussed without government intervention. Now, through transparent voting procedures, democratic nations permit eligible voters to update and amend local and national laws and even replace government representatives. Government officials are limited to the amount of time they are allowed to serve, and by this is by law now, aren't placed in any positions to take on the role of a king, queen, or emperor. Government officials and representatives aren't allowed to change laws, rules, and regulations on a whim just to appeal to their particular needs or desires. They are placed or voted into their positions to act as the custodians of their democratic nation and work for the people. Now, all of this may sound like living in democratic nations is a dream come true or a panacea of freedom and thought. The truth is, it's still a work in progress. Now, once again, why am I making such an uproar over this? You see, the fact that citizens of democratic nations have the right to air their grievances has gotten morphed into a type of tribalism that promote obsessive goals that override the voice of, of other reasonable and mutually beneficial objectives. Now, there are citizens and groups in democratic nations that have become excessively aggressive in their positions to the point of becoming blind to how their infighting has weakened their country's stability. Some people taking part in social and political movements in democratic nations may not even be aware of or care that they or their organization is being used as proxy for implementing the goals of a charismatic individual or a foreign government. They have become blindsided, which is very dangerous for the well-being of any nation and is exactly what nefarious foreign nations would like to see take place in countries that they see as their adversaries. 
Now, I hope those involved in such organizations take a look at how their obsessive behaviors could cause them to become blind to how external systematic influences made by governments that consider democratic governments as enemies work to hasten their downfall through competing organizations. I hope that the leaders and followers of competing social and political organizations in democratic nations take the time to understand how they could easily become unwilling surrogates of external forces that do not care for their cause because they are all, they only want to create an environment where all competing parties lose control across the board while compromising or corrupting their nation's existence. Now, if citizens of democratic nations allow selfish perspectives of their freedoms to form into absolutism or tribalism, their nation as a whole may easily fall into irreversible social, political, and financial destruction. Citizens of democratic nations must not strive to push their grievances to the point of national implosion which only makes every citizen of their country susceptible to external and destructive foreign government intervention. The whole world saw what happened on January 6th in Washington, D.C. And this is something that just can't be erased from American history. Some nations will undoubtedly use this scar in American history as a propaganda piece that proves, at least from their perspectives, that democratic governments and their people aren't united or focused and only breed individuals who are only concerned for themselves. If you found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay safe and healthy wherever you are in the world.